I'm a tone chaser. That thing you hear in your head that you just can't quite get. Hey, chasers. How you doing? Segment three. Under toi. Three. Okay, here we go. When Edward played me the tape, I remembered hearing a piece at the end of Could This Be Magic, which almost sounded like an edit from another song. While working on the book, I discovered the instrumental's title was Growth. Gotta stop here. Everybody knows that it wasn't at the end of Could This Be Magic. It was in a simple rhyme. So I made a mistake. I made a mistake in this first edition. I wanna thank Michelle Schenkel for pointing this out to me. Uh, in the second edition, which should be here. I'm hoping three months at the outside. I'm hoping a little less than that. Um, this section will read uh, in a simple rhyme. So uh, anybody who's gunning for me for that mistake, I fixed it already. Well, Michelle fixed it for me. So here we go. Growth. Uh, we were actually going to make a song out of that, but we didn't have the time on the record. So Ted just said, why don't we just use it for a, a small tease for next mm -hmm. year, you know, and mm -hmm. put it on the leader or whatever you call it, the last couple of seconds mm -hmm. of the record right for your needle lift off the record. <laughs> you know, we'll probably make a song out of it. And it'll appear on the next one. The riff was never revisited, though it probably uh, exists somewhere in the uh, Van Halen archives, right? Thinking about that coda on Could This Be Magic? Insert in a simple rhyme. I looked at my notes. When Edward came over this time and realizing we were probably going to sit in his car again to listen to tracks, I was prepared and brought a pen and paper with me to jot down notes. There's like lots of little intro bits that really don't have anything to do with the song, really. Yeah. Immediately he locked in on, one, on where I was going. Oh yeah, Tora Tora is the, <clears throat> the in, introduction to Lost Control, which uh, is kind of appropriately titled, it sounds like. You know, a Spitfire taking off or something. How was that done? Uh, I did it with uh, with one of those Floyd Rose vibrato bar things. Uh, if you have a strider, I can show you. Yeah. Sidebar. Whammy bar sidebar. That was an intriguing comment because it sounded as if he was not at all familiar with that trim system since he referred to it as one of those Floyd Rose vibrato bar things and not simply as a Floyd or Floyd Rose. You know what I mean? He was a little vague about it. Um, and he didn't talk about it as if he had been using it a lot. So even though he may have, it was just a little strange to hear him describe it that way. Sidebar two, on the... Asking if I had a Strat was odd since he'd played my Fender on his previous visit. Perhaps, perhaps he didn't think I had one or that maybe it had been sold or simply didn't remember playing it. Still in all oddness. It was strange. Uh, when Ed came over and he'd see the guitars, it was almost as if uh, he was surprised I had guitars there and I could never figure that out. Uh, odd. I fetched my 66 Fender from the familiar corner and handed it to him. He rested the Les Paul against the couch. I asked him if he wanted to play through a pig nose, a tiny five watt one channel practice amp with a five inch speaker I had picked up sometime after his first visit. You wanna plug in, you wanna plug in the pig nose? Yeah. I like your long cord there, referring to this massively long guitar cable I used. And what he really, what he was really saying was, why are you using such a ridiculously long cord because it fucks up your sound? And he would tell me that on a future visit to the pad when he plugged in using that same mile long length of cable, right? Edward the inventor, Edward tone chaser, realizing that a long cable is gonna change the sound, even if it's just in a minute way. So pretty, pretty amazing. Sure, he remarked, commenting on the pig nose's sound. He then illustrated how he achieved those effects at the beginning of Tora Tora, including those mini pit plucks and the dive bombs. Uh, it actually almost sounded the same forward as it does backwards. It really? just gives the decay instead of going. Uh, so you, you reverse the tape. See, my guitar goes way down low. Uh -huh. It goes to the point where you don't hear a note. It just goes. Uh -huh. Just me to go down as low. Reverses the vibrato bar, 
180 so it faced the body of the guitar rather than the neck. Can you can you can you picture that? So it's turned all the way back facing out, you know, uh the bottom of the guitar. So it gets to the point where there's no tone in this thing at all. It just sounds like a uh, and then the combination of the <laughs> So utterly unique and yet so profoundly simple. Thus began our second go around with Edward Van Halen sitting in my house, playing a guitar while I watched and listened breathlessly. At the same time, tried to maintain some sense of professional decorum in conducting anything that might resemble a cohesive and comprehensible interview. Um, yeah, you know, you've asked me what was that like sitting there watching Edward play me riffs from upcoming Van Halen records. It was an experience so surreal that that when I try to think about it now, it, it, it's hard. It's truly hard for me to imagine it happened. And even after writing about it and trying to dive back into my brain as deep as I could, um, it, it, it all it, it all seems somehow too fantastic to have ever happened. Um, and it's really only when I hear the the interview. And I hear my voice and Edward's voice and the guitar being played that, you know, that it, that it takes on some, some sense of reality. So that's a good place to end. Um, we'll see you back here in a bit for uh, segment three or segment four. I forget, people. See you in a bit. You can uh, obtain the book through me, uh, through my link, paypal.me backslash tone chaser. The book is $47, which includes shipping here in the U.S. Um, don't forget your address and please send those PayPal payments as family and friends because we're all friends, right? Bye.